We respectfully request the Sangha great virtues for the sake of this assembly and all living beings. Please turn the wonderful Dharma wheel to teach and guide us out and birth and death. Deep suffering and attain bliss and quickly realize non-birth. Kum din dai tang tin vi thu phao hoi kam nhak thiếp chung san Tình tiếng yêu phạm luân giao đạo ngã mùng Như há liệu sanh thoát tư ly khổ đạt là Tất chương vô sanh Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Namo Sananto Suche Do Ye Allah Hadi San Miao San Puto Ye. Namo Tadaka To Ya Daya Allah Hadi Namio Tambo Da Toa. The unsurpassed, profound, subtle, and wonderful Dharma in a hundred thousand million aeons is difficult to encounter. Now that I'm able to see and hear, I will receive and maintain it. I vow to fathom the thus come one's true and actual principles. Wu shang sheng sheng wei miao fa bai chen O Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Great Master Wei Neng, Great Master Shenhua, all good monks and nuns and all good no advisors are Hello everyone, today is the 20th of August 2022. We're here to continue discussing the second chapter of the Six Patriarch Sutra. You're on slide um, uh, 200. Uh, he's in the midst of explaining, uh, ta- teaching us about prajna wisdom. Prajna wisdom refers to, again, the uh, supreme wisdom that Impressive. Uh, several seconds that I have to hold my breath and tell you about this ultimate truth here. Uh, isn't that wonderful? Huh? Uh, that's what it says. If it's important enough, they come and stop you and, and uh, distract you. Mm. What was it about again? Uh, no. Okay, so the strategy wisdom is the kind of wisdom that uh, you, supreme wisdom that you have, we all have not just the Buddhas, we all have this wisdom. And the Buddha realizes that because of that, uh, uh, all of us can be much better off. So he came to our world and taught us uh, about this spiritual wisdom here and trained us how to uh, uh, access it, how to activate it and how to manipulate it, okay? And so that's, um, uh, the purpose of this, uh, this sutra. This sutra is, is the sixth page chapter, 
taught us about this spiritual wisdom, and uh, this is designed, its instructions are designed to um, help us uh, connect with that partial wisdom uh, and, and, and utilize it. Uh, all right? Uh, okay, so the context, for your context, uh, the text says, uh, let me repeat it for you, what is meant by no thought. No thought means to view all dharma with the mind undefiled by attachment. The function pervades all places, but is nowhere attached. Okay? So he explains that when you have this fragile wisdom, uh, uh, you, when you are in the state of wisdom, your mind is free of thoughts. It's no thoughts. Okay? Uh, in contrast, your mind now is constantly filled with thoughts. This is our natural state of mind. Uh, when we wake up in the morning, we start. We, we start thinking. Uh, and it goes like that. Thank you. It goes like that nonstop until we fall asleep. And we really are uh, not trained, never learned how they, here, go and sit down, guys. Uh, take photo, photo, uh, master photo, and the kids. Photo. <laughs> smile. Remember the smile, huh? Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, the, uh, yeah, the camera captured already. Thank you. The kids are going away. Kodak moment. Mm. Mm. So we, uh, our, our heads are filled up with thoughts, and we have no way of stopping them. Okay, so the Buddhist uh, practices are designed to help us develop this ability to stop thoughts uh, first, and then after you are able to stop your thoughts, then you'll be able to wield this prasya wisdom, access this prasya wisdom. Okay, so prasya wisdom is. Uh, uh, a little bit more advanced than uh, no thoughts, advanced no thoughts, if you will. Okay. Um, uh, so what does it mean, no thought? Uh, this, the way he explains it, uh, Master Hui Neng, the sixth page track, explains it, it's so beautiful, it's so practical. Okay. Uh, what does it mean, no thought? Okay. Uh, you hear about this quite often from the Chinese literature, the Mahayana literature, is that uh, uh, Buddha has no thoughts and so forth. And they refer to the fact that the Buddha, when mm. he's in a state, or you're in a state of Buddhahood, then your mind is free of thoughts. Okay? What is, if your mind is free of thoughts, how can you live? Anyone knows? How can you work? Is that possible? That you have no thoughts in your mind at all? Even when you work, they have no thoughts? When you eat, they have no thoughts? When you talk, you have no thoughts? When you create, you have no thoughts? You believe? Is it possible? Yes or black? Amitabha, for um, Master, I think um, uh, it's possible because um, when we drive, I don't think we, we have much thought, but uh, we do drive uh, properly. We drive Is that out. why you got rear-ended by a truck <laughs> like a couple of years ago? <laughs> Is that you thought. went into a no-thought thing and <laughs> boom, <laughs> they hit you in the rear. Yeah, Were you in no thought state? Yeah, I, I think I, I, I don't think much when I drive. That's what happened. You should stop it. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? What is no thought here? Yes, green. Uh, 
Let me perform master. I think that for increase the volume. For example, when we eat um, the food entering our mouth, we know that it is good, taste, it, it tastes delicious or not, but we don't follow the thought after to attach to whether I want it more or not. So no attachment to the flavor. In that case, I think this is uh, no thought. So for example, today at lunch, you enjoy the pizza? Did you enjoy the pizza? Anyone? She ate pizza. She liked it. And describe your state of no thought. No translation. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Amito for Master, um, I realized that pizza this time is very delicious, better than many other times. However, I only take one piece. I don't take the second piece. That's no thought? And how did you decide you not to take a second uh, slice of pizza? They talk good, but uh, they yeah, con không có suy nghĩ gì hết. Tự tự động là con dừng lại, con không có suy nghĩ gì hết. I have no thought at all. Naturally, I just stop. I don't take the second piece. How many it's slices natural. of pizza do you normally eat? Yeah, thường thường thì có hai miếng. Master normally two. So why today all of a sudden you normally have two slices of pizza and today only one slice of pizza? How do you explain that? The difference. How does it come about? Dạ hoàng là toàn lúc đó là tự động giờ con cũng không có suy nghĩ gì hết. Và bây giờ con cũng không biết tại sao. Amito for master at that time it just naturally in my instant is that way I don't know how to explain it but it just natural instant. So for example, uh, does it mean that in the event, uh, does it also mean that you used to love, uh, love your husband twice as much as well? Now you love him 50% less, naturally. A meat of a master, I don't know how to compare that analogy. It's not about comparison. It's about, I'm trying to get you to tell us how you did it. You know, you can go from two slices of pizza to one slice of pizza without doing anything. Okay, 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 that's what you say. I'm asking you, uh, does it also mean you also love your husband one slice less? Without thinking? Okay, never mind the husband. Okay, let's talk something more real. How about your son, your precious son? Does it also mean that you also can love your son 50% less without even thinking? You think about it here while you were the green one. This question applies to you, okay? Which what she's talking about. All of a sudden, she says, yeah, I just decide not to take it, and I don't have to think about it. And does it mean you too can l love him less, you know, naturally, without even thinking? Uh, I think so. He says, don't, don't tell him, mommy. <laughs> don't hurt me. Yeah? You, you, you buy into that?
All right, I don't know the context completely, but oh, no, the context. Is it? Yeah. Never mind. Okay, going back to the or orange one. So how do you arrive at? It? It's the same process. Since you don't even have to think, all of a sudden you decide, uh, I'm going to love him less. I'm going to eat less. How does it come about? Yeah, answer. Dạ lúc đó con không có suy nghĩ thành ra bây giờ con cũng không không nhớ lại nữa. Cái sự tự động à. So now you don't Giống như là đi xe rồi thấy ngoài trước có tai nạn thí dụ rồi tự động con thắng lại thôi. Không có suy nghĩ. So that means you stop loving your husband 100% without thinking. Oh, now this is a lot more serious than I thought. Without thinking, you just stop. Like you see an accident when you're driving, you say, oh, I better stop. Same thing. You see your husband, I better stop. How does that work? Hmm? Okay, let me explain to you. Uh, and never mind about the slice of pizza and the husband, that's too personal. Let's not talk about it. It's just curious, that's, about, uh, that's all. But uh, we, uh, uh, we get to let you get off the hook here for a while. Uh, no thought here means to view all dharma with the mind undefiled by attachment. Meaning, as it says, okay? Uh, here's what happens when you look at a slice of pizza, yes? Okay? And you say, good pizza or bad pizza, something like that happens naturally, yes? We all know we took a bite and said, oh, good pizza. Yeah, she said, <laughs> good pizza. Huh? Or, hey, yuck. Okay? It happens naturally. Is that clear? Okay? That is still no thought. Is that clear? Your perception, good or bad, desire, undesirable, undesirable, is natural. It's still no thought. Okay? Uh, uh, it's only when, after that, he says, let's have some red peppers. Pepper flakes. Anyone today? I took a slight pizza and said, pepper flakes. What happened to pepper flakes? Happened to anyone? It's just me? It's just only me, huh? Why do I feel so lonely? lonely? I mean, am I the only one who eats pizza who expects pepper flakes with my pizza? Seriously? <laughs> okay, so that is what he's referring to. Uh, to view all things, all dharma as he hears mean all things. Look at everything with a mind. Okay, the mind right there, undefined by attachment. If I look at a slice of pizza and I say, good pizza, bad pizza, it's a fact. Okay? The mind is perception of the facts. We condition to feel this good, we condition to feel it's bad. That's how we train. So far so good, that's how we function normally. That's still no thought. Okay? However, when the thought arises and says, uh, red, bad for flakes, what happened to the flakes? What happened to the Parmigiano cheese? What kind, what kind of outfit is this? Yeah, eat pizza without pepper flakes, without parmigiana uh, cheese. Okay? What, what is that called? A mind defiled by attachment to pepper flakes or parmigiana cheese. Is that clear? Then it's no longer no thought. 
So if you have a slice of pizza, you say, oh, it's good pizza, and you eat it, okay? Naturally, it's still no thought. But when you have a thought that arises after, it says, uh, uh, I want more cheese. Anyone? Seriously? I was the only one? You guys are weird. You that or you dishonest. Okay? Uh, so that is uh, to have thought. Is that clear? This is distinction here is very precise. You need to be clear about this. It means that in a state of no thought, does it mean you're dead? You still experience flavors, you experience the, the, you are still able to process the facts properly, but you don't give rise to demands, okay, or rejection. Is that clear? He said, this is good pizza, that's no thought. That's natural. A statement of, 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 of fact. This is good pizza, this is bad pizza, this needs more cheese. This needing more cheese. No thought or with thoughts. Hmm? They have to think. <laughs> you guys are weird. My God, where have you been? You are just too yellow-faced. Huh? Okay, never mind about pizza. What about, what about you have uh, some, uh, some, uh, some stir fries? Okay. And, and you eat it and you say, mm, more soy sauce. <laughs> okay? Is that with thought or without thought? Huh? Thought? Who says thought? One, two, three, four, five. No, no, it's not for you. <laughs> it's for the, you know, the soy sauce people. <laughs> you like Chinese food too? Oh, me too. Uh, uh, no thought. Because it's state of fact, because your palates are used to a certain balance of flavors, right? So the food has to be salty enough for you, otherwise you say, okay, this is not salty, okay? It's no thought, it's still not an attachment. It's a, it is a statement of facts that this dish here is not salty enough. That's a statement of fact. It's when you have, thank you. Hey! <laughs> He's tough, isn't he? he? He doesn't get startled that easily. Okay? He has no thoughts. <laughs> you got that? So, you see, and you see, you interact with the world, okay? That's your natural state of no thoughts. But when you have something like rejection or like, that is thought, right? He said, I would like another slice of pizza. That is thoughts. Because it's called thought because how does a thought arise? From something called greed. Does it make sense? The pizza, just pizza, is good. But you were greedy for more flavors, therefore he said, I want more. That is called a thought. Does it make sense to you? Okay, that is what he meant here in this sentence. No thought means a view, okay, all dharmas, everything, with a mind that undefined by attachment. If you see it and you say, oh, it's white, this is black, this is uh, pale face, this is black face, and so forth. That's a statement of facts. There's no defilement there. There's no attachment there. Just a statement of facts. Okay? But he says, I don't like you. I'm out of here. Okay? That is, uh, those thoughts arise because of the three poisons. 
greed, anger, and stupidity. Then it's called thought. So what is the engine behind the thought that arises? The, that's what differentiates between what's called thought versus no thought. Is that clear? That's a distinction. That's a definition. So do not mistake the fact of uh, when we talk about no thought that you don't have any thoughts at all in your mind. It's not true. Okay? The thought that arises from the lack of greed, anger, stupidity is called no thoughts. So that's why you can still function every day, normally, as long as you're not motivated by greed, anger, and stupidity, then you have no thoughts. Okay, so attachment, in other words, this attachment word here, okay, the attachment is formed by greed, anger, and stupidity. That's all. It's that simple. And the way the patriarch put it is very eloquent, very precise, but uh, it's still causes misunderstanding, okay? It's very precise, it says, mind undefined by attachment. Attachment, if you take a step further, attachment is created by greed, anger, stupidity. That's all. Does it help? So when she says, I have a slice pizza, I have good, uh, this is good pizza, and I stop. I didn't take a second slice. Is that with thought or without thought? Without thought, someone says. Without thought, no, no thought. How about the rest of you? Go ahead. Uh, green. It depends on why she only take one. If she uh, only take one because uh, the uh, thoughts of great anger and uh, stupidity, uh, that still a thought. Yes, by definition. I'm asking you, when she stopped this morning? I should stop this morning. <laughs> 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 Maybe she really wanted, but she's like, okay, I, I want to lose weight. I, I, I'm worried about eating too much. Then so let's say that I uh, stop here because I want to lose weight. Is that with thought or without thought? So, so we thought. With thought, right? We agree, right? I stop here because I'm uh, uh, overweight. No, no, no. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, how can we describe her? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the way she described it is that I didn't think, I just stop. That is exactly no thought. Very good. Applause. <laughs> See, that's how you function naturally. You don't have that. So at, mo at times, you can do that too. At times you say, I just stop here. Okay? Uh, and and, and uh, that's called no thought. However, however, the difference between you in those states versus her is that she's constantly in that state. When you stop, it's because you think you're eating something else. <laughs> she just stopped. Is that clear? Okay, and, and how can you tell the difference? You cannot tell. That's the problem. Is it clear? This is what happens to the Buddhists, by the way. They practice to get to the point where they think they have no thoughts. Actually, they cannot see the, the driving force behind that state. That's all themselves. You know, fascinating. That's why the, you know, the, the Buddhists, even the advanced practitioners, they're mistaken too. They can be mistaken. They jump to conclusions prematurely. So it's not uncommon for people at low level that would think they have no thoughts. And actually, it's driven by greed. Anger, stupidity. You see how beautiful definition is. He says, 
the mind free from attachment caused by greed, anger, stupidity. Between in parentheses, okay? Yes, black. Uh, beautiful master, then uh, I think then our um, our um, knowledge about uh, Buddhism, or, or if we we pick up a, a sutra and we uh, chant through it or we read through it, uh, we can uh, be misunderstand it. Because Vonim, uh, we are all thinking that uh, we have no no false thinking, but actually in this this uh, explanation that the, uh, we are not being defiled by by the attachment, by greed, anger, and stupidity. It's so, much more accurate. Yeah, I added greed, anger, yeah. stupidity because without it, you're still confused. So, so, so most of us who 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 uh, try to study Buddhism without a teacher or without um, real, really, then we can be we can misunderstand the whole thing. Absolutely, her 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 colleagues, you know, the co-cultivator. They have a hundred of them to, uh, practicing uh, together, and they all think themselves having no thought and so forth. Yeah. But actually, uh, yeah, yeah. they all full of greed, anger, yeah, stupidity. Yeah, yeah. How can they possibly have no thoughts? They're always fighting each other, arguing with each other, and so forth, right? So you cannot tell me they have no, no three poisons. And yet they say, I have no thoughts. Okay? And that's a fallacy. You don't decide it to yourself. Go ahead, Wei Mountain. Master, I have a question between uh, arising a thought. Was the translation to Vietnamese as Tak e, or it just say khởi niệm. Is there a difference between the two? Sorry. Um, I'm, I have a question in regards to the English to Vietnamese translation. When we say the thought arise um, in Vietnamese, does it mean tak e, or it mean khởi niệm? Where the thought arises. I so don't see it here in English. Um, I'm trying to translate to the word that we have a thought. Where does is that, that mean English? We saw e. In English, yes. When we have a thought, where the thought arises, when you're trying to explain that, does it mean in Vietnamese it means back e or it means khởi niệm? It means niệm khởi. Thank you, Master. Okay. Uh, these are important distinctions because there's certain jargon in Buddhism very precise. Unless you know what you're doing, you will be mistaken. It's very easy to translate improperly. Just like this morning when I explained to you about the song enlightenment, the translation to English is incorrect and that causes problems, serious problems. Okay. Uh, That's okay, let them be. Don't worry, don't worry. Let, let them be, it's okay. Uh, it's, uh, it's us too, we need to bear with it. And uh, we don't let him eat tonight, that's all. <laughs> it's okay, don't worry, let them be. Let them play, it's okay. Uh, because, because if it bothers you, what is that called? We thought. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have to pretend we have no thoughts. <laughs> okay, uh, next, uh, this, is it clear? Does it help? Okay, it, it is so commonplace for the Buddhist disciples, the Buddhist uh, researchers, and to understand what it means by no thought because um, it is. Uh, very fairly easy to misunderstand this process. Why? Because they, they haven't got there yet. They only read up on things. They haven't got to the state of no thought. That's why they don't know what they're talking about. Someone has just tell you, you reached no thought. Then they say, ah, that's no thought. That's when you know yourself. But others still don't know. Others have, still have no clues. Okay, now you understand why some occasionally I said, oh, you, you are there. Because, because then 
then you know I'm telling you that your state is real. It's accurate, not your imagination. Until that happens, until someone tells you, you should not believe yourself. Period. Wei Mount. Master, uh, thank you. Um, I'm used to thinking a lot about pizza, but what's a good example of a, a thought of stupidity? Thought of stupidity? Uh, I'm sorry, I can't think about anything. <laughs> Stupid. Someone help me out. Daniel, give me some example of thought of stupidity. Very good. The guy is learning very fast. <laughs> Anyone else would like to tell me an example of thought of stupidity? You could say, I have no more thought of stupidity. <laughs> I'm finished. Yes, Orange. Yeah, I did a part. Con thấy thí dụ như những người ham mê cờ bạc. Người ta nói là cờ bạc là bác thằng bần. Nhưng mà cứ nghĩ là ai thua thì thua, mình luôn luôn là thắng. Cho nên là rốt cuộc cứ thua hết keo này tới keo kia. Thì như vậy là ngu si. A metaphor, Master, I saw that these people are greedy for gambling. There's a verse in Vietnamese saying that the um, gambling is the uncle of the poor. So the people who doesn't believe, they just think that um, these poor people is their own problem. So they just keep playing. In the end, they ended up losing everything. So I think that is the example of stupidity. Okay, example. Yeah, that, that's correct. Especially the people who are addicted to gambling, you know, uh, they cannot help themselves. Okay, it's true. It's very good, very good example. Excellent. Um, so, uh, thoughts of stupidity are the, in general, uh, the thoughts that are uh, for a general rule of thumb, for your reference, a thought, for example, that denies the connection between cause and effect. That's stupidity. You know, for example, you say, uh, uh, if I steal from someone and she doesn't know, it's no harm. Is that correct? That's called thought of stupidity. Just because you're not caught doesn't mean it's okay. And, and you may be laughing, but this is how people in the world operate. Sounds familiar? We steal from the companies, we steal from our friends, we steal from our families, we steal from our acquaintances. As long as we're not caught, there's no harm done, right? That's so wrong. That very stupid behavior. And you don't need to be caught. You don't need to be judged. Uh, the fact that, that you steal and you cheat someone in the future, you have to pay it back. It's a matter of time. You cannot avoid it. No one can. Even Buddhas cannot avoid it. Is that clear? It's for everyone. So uh, such thoughts are really, really stupid, and yet, and yet, that's I use how I use the function. I use the thing that, you know, I can do anything I please. And as long as I'm not caught, what's the big deal? Okay? Uh, that's sheer stupidity. Okay? Uh, you see? You see? And that's, that's, why, that's why we are exercising not having thoughts of stupidity. Okay? by bearing with all the kids screaming and throwing things at you. <laughs> because we have no attachments, right? You can do that as long as you don't throw my uh, microphone. <laughs> okay. Mm.
Okay, and last, last week we talked about eyes contemplate sound and forms outside. There's nothing inside. And we always talk about ears, hear the dust and phenomena, mind do not know. Okay, so we talked about that extensively. We're going to skip that. And next, the, fast, the last uh, sentence, the function pervades all places, but is nowhere attached. Meaning what? Okay, function here. Uh, refers to what? Pervades all places. F function here means whatever you do to do something is called function. Why is it called function? Function of your nature. Your nature is going to do something. Okay? And that's called function. Function is to do, is utilized for something. And nature decides to eat. Nature decides to sleep. And nature decides to go to work. Okay? That's called function. Your function of the nature is to produce for eight hours a day at work. Okay? Is that clear? That's a function. Function of your being, of your Self. Your function right now is to sit and listen. That's a function of your nature. Yes? Yeah. The function of the kids is to run around, make noises, and play because they're kids. Okay? Our function as adults is to bear with it. Okay? And not complain. All right. Uh, so the function pervades all places, meaning that you do that everywhere, uh, but is nowhere attached. Uh, and, and yet, uh, you can be like that without depending on anything. For example, people say, I can bear with the noise and bear the kids running around as long as master uh, allows it. Sound familiar? Okay. Is that, is that considered nowhere attached? The function is I would put up with the noise. I would not flinch. Okay. I would not complain. I would not get afflicted as long as master tolerates it. Master says it's okay. Okay. Uh, does that mean in that state there, you are nowhere attached. No, it doesn't, because you are attached to the fact that I allow it. If I didn't allow you, say, sit down! Right? So I'm your attachment and say, I don't know, but if, if he says okay, the voice okay. So this funky here, that's why I'm training you, that you can be here with or without me, the kids and run around, make noises, and you say, okay, make noises, see if I care. Is that clear? So, so what is the implication that when you think about it, why do people put on facades? Why do, do people pretend? Because of attachments, right? As a Vietnamese example, they said, I'm not going to lose face. I'm not, you know, I'm above this. Sounds familiar? I'm going to keep my cool. And that is attachment to faces. Yes? Hmm. So prashya, if you have wisdom, uh, you don't make pretenses. You don't pretend at all. There's no need to pretend. Does it make sense? So whatever you do, the function pervades all places. Whatever you decide to do, Okay? It's not based on pretending or put on a facade or trying to look good, avoiding looking bad and so forth. Okay? There's no need for all those. Or for monks and nuns, we do this so that we look impressive and people give us more money, more donations. Sounds familiar? Okay? Uh, as soon as you leave 
I would put my feet up and on the uh, table, and oh my God, such a long day. <laughs> oh, I'm glad now I can relax. Don't need to pretend to look, you know, and sit in full lotus and look so adorned and cool. So tiring to be like that. Okay, and so, so that's why, that's why, uh, that's why when you understand this process, you don't need to put on facades. You don't need to judge people. Actually, you feel sorry for the people who put on facades. Don't judge them, because they are uh, laden with attachments. They have so many attachments. They need to feel compelled to put on facades. Okay, uh, they they are so um, seeking of people's approval. It's sad. It's a sad state of mind. You know, uh, in particular, and I'm I admit to you, in particular for us monks and nuns, we fall prey to that. We need to put on a facade for you. Uh, I need to look magnanimous. Generous and cool, and you know, I'm always unflustered, and always speak the nice and kind words, and smile to you. Oh, how are you today? I'm so glad you're here. Okay, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, and we are guilty of that. We're guilty of the fact that that uh, we so especially monks and nuns, we are so worried about how we are perceived that we need to cultivate this image of being magnanimous and kind and compassionate and so forth. So we cease to be real, okay? And if you like that, uh, uh, you're doing a disservice to uh, Buddhism, you're doing a disservice to your followers, I feel. Hmm? Okay, for the sake of getting more donations. Okay, so it's funny because uh, because I have been training a lot of monks and nuns, and now and we're going to the second phase where I ask them to stand up and say, "No, the old monk here should be the front man for Northern California." You know, he'll. Uh, people who know the come come to the temple and see him as a face with the uh, with the temples here uh, and so forth and 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 so people ask him, can I take your photo? So attach your photo to Dharma Treasury Temple, to Go Forest Temple. He says, no, leave me alone. Is that no thought or with thought? Hmm? With thoughts, right? Because I don't want to take a photo. I don't want my photo taken because I don't want to be known, right? Okay. On the surface is a good thing because they've been trained too well. Either they're lazy, like me, or they decided they are not going to look for fame and profit, which is a good thing, okay? So, uh, but why do I say it's with thought? Yes, orange. Yeah, theo con nghĩ, con ý niệm là bởi vì ý niệm tôi không muốn. Tại có cái không và có cái muốn ở trong. Amitofo, Master, I think that it is still a thought that say I don't want this, and this is the thought of rejection. There's still, it is still a thought. That's right. He says, I don't want recognition. I don't want attention to myself. Okay, that thought there, okay, is a thought because against because it goes against what my instruction.
Basically, he says, I may agree with Master, I may respect him, but I'm not looking for fame and profit. Okay, whereas my instructions go and be a representative. He says, no, I'm going to do it because I'm not like that. Okay, yeah. so it's called fa zhi. It's called attachment to the Dharma. Is that clear? Yes, they understand they're not attached to fame, they're not attached to profit. Okay, it's wrong to be attached to fame, it's wrong to be attached to profit. Okay, that is correct. Okay, however, if I say it's okay, and you disagree with me, then you're attaching to the concepts. You understand the subtlety? In Buddhism, it's called attachment to the Dharma. The, uh, you attach to the concept of no fame, no profit seeking. That's still a concept. And he's attached to it if he refuses. Does it make sense? This is commonplace. It's a very subtle attachment that unless I point it out to him, he will not be able to see it. It's very subtle. It's called attachment to the Dharma. And that's what you have a problem you don't even know. This is your attachment. You don't get it yet. So each level you have your attachments. Okay, so this function here, meaning that you're able to be like this, to work, or to be yourself uh, everywhere, anywhere, in the US, in Canada, in uh, the Pure Land, and so forth, but is nowhere attached. That's called prajna. So when you have practice of wisdom, you can work and behave and live normally, and it's free from any attachments. That's the beauty of practice of wisdom. You can do anything, and yet you're not attached at all. It's called total freedom. Okay, and that's prasya, that's prasya wisdom. And that is, again, I stress for all of you who are new here, uh, this prasya wisdom here, you have it. You just don't know how to use it, that's all. And the nature of the teaching is that we need first to remind you it's yours. It's nothing that you need to uh, develop or build or invent or create, it's inside of you, buried deep inside of you. That's all. And you need to dig and dig or clean and wipe it off until you can see it. Then you say, oh, that's mine. Then you can use it. Is it clear? It's not something new at all. It's not anything new. It's something you always have. And you just need to learn how to see it so that you can use it. You yourself have to see it. Whether I see it or not is irrelevant. You have to see it yourself. Is that clear? You all have it, by the way. I need to emphasize it. It's nothing new to you. You have it. You just don't know where it is, in a, in a manner of speaking. You just don't know where it is, that's all. I, it's like an old person, I don't know where I put my car keys. Questions, comments? Yes, Orange. Anh Diên Đạo Phật, nhà thưa Thầy, con nhớ Hòa Thượng Tuyên Hóa thường nói dạy cái câu là everything is okay, thì đó phải là khi Ngài, Ngài đã đạt được cái dụng tự tại rồi, thì Ngài mới dạy chúng ta như vậy hay không? Master Amitofo, Master, I remember Master Xinhua has a saying that everything is okay 
Is it because he has attained the function, um, function is at ease? That is why he's saying this? Uh, that's a state of mind that I cannot explain to you. If I say yes or no, it doesn't mean anything to you. Uh, what we try to do, what I try to do for you, is for you to help you enter that state. Whether I say yes or no to you, just okay. It's just like to you, it's like, okay, so the pizza uh, uh, tastes good, but you don't really, cannot express more than that. And that's the nature of Buddhist teachings. The Buddhist teaching is that somehow bring you there, instruction bring you there for you to experience it experience a state of no thoughts, the state of freedom from depression, freedom from, from attachment, freedom from afflictions. Okay? You have to enter it yourself. Otherwise, it's no way to explain it to you. No way. You have to experience it. So Buddhist things, Buddhist, uh, in Buddhism, the emphasis has always been since when the Buddha first came to our world and started teaching his disciples, the objective has always been to tell you what you ought to do in order to experience that. That state called first dhyana, the state called fifth samadhi, that state called fourth stage arhat, the state called first ground bodhisattva, is not meant to, dis- to be described to you. It's meant for you to get there, okay? That's our job, to bring you there, okay? And when you're there, okay, uh, the Buddha's instruction, the Buddha's description of what it is, will make sense to you then. Until that happens, there's no point in telling you about it because you don't know anything. You don't understand it. You can, yeah, the words make sense to you, but it's not about words. It's about whether you can do it or not. Because that's why Master Xinhua, my late Chinese teacher, is the only monk I know who stressed that. He stressed giving us instructions how to be there, to get there, instead of giving us knowledge on what it's about. He says, you know, the, the monks who don't know, they read from the books and they said, okay, uh, the prajna is this, is that, it's no thought. The function pervades all places, but it's nowhere attached. It's from the, the, the text, okay? Is it obvious, isn't it? And they, 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 you ask them, what is no thought? They go, well, that's what this, this is what the Buddha says. No thought is uh, look at all Dharma with uh, un, my undefined by attachment. What's not clear to you? And this happens everywhere, all places. And, uh, but it's nowhere attached. What's not clear to you is it's, it's great English to me. And that's what happened to Buddhism nowadays. The monks and nuns, especially, I met a lot of uh, Bhantes um, from Sri Lanka, from, from uh, Thailand and so forth. And, and they, they keep on, and especially professors, they keep on bringing up these words from sutras. But I look at them and say, you don't even know what you're talking about. And that's why that's what uh, was the comment was made earlier is very important. It sounds casual, but it's very important. In that, in that all these sutras here are the general principles to describe to you that state. But I cannot describe everything because you won't be able to understand everything. Therefore, we explain to you this state there, like this uh, slide 198. And then people like Master Shinhua will have to come and teach you how to cross your legs, how to meditate, how to, how to listen to sutra lectures, and how to uh, uh, 
be a nicer person, a kinder person, and so forth, until you're able to experience it yourself. It's not meant for you to understand. You have to experience it. And so the instructions from the monks and nuns are designed to push you and push you and push you and push you until you get there. So each monk and nun has their own ways of pushing you. And Master Shenhua is one of the best I've seen. Only surpassed by the sixth patriarch in my personal experience. That's all. Okay? Yeah. Questions or comments? Okay. 201. That is a practice of samadhi and freedom and liberation and is called the practice of no thought. Okay, very good. So he says, he went through a lot of explanation. He says, this prajna here is it's prajna or your transcendental wisdom is a form of samadhi. In other words, when you enter this prajna samadhi, your prajna wisdom is operational, naturally. You don't have to do a thing. So that's what happened to these advanced beings. They can enter this prajna samadhi and naturally they'll, the wisdom uh, comes to the fore. That's all. It functions without uh, anywhere attached. Okay? And that's freedom. Uh, it's not freedom, but self mastery. Okay? Can you change it? The English uh, translation here is like uh, made a long time ago, and they uh, didn't quite have the vocabulary that we agree to nowadays. Zi uh, zai is not, is not li- freedom. Okay? Zi zai here is called self-mastery, at ease. It has nothing to do with freedom. Freedom is American. Or... Uh, the Chinese like to think it's freedom, but actually it's American. The Chinese is zi zai, okay? The Chinese is self-mastery. It's not freedom. American is freedom. Uh, what about Hispanics? What is your... Huh? <laughs> Daniel is too busy translating. <laughs> okay, so it's self-mastery. Uh, it's called self mastery because uh, you are under no influence, outside influence. Okay. Uh, okay, very good. When you are in this state of mind, which, by the way, it's something that you can flip at this stage here. You can flip into a confused state like us, and you flip it and go into prajna, just like that. What about Buddhas? Do they flip? No, Buddha is always in prajna. That's why they call Buddhas. We're not Buddhas. That's why we're not. That's who we are. <laughs> okay? You can click, pretend, I am always there. Forget it. Wishful thinking. We are different Buddhas in that we cannot always be there. We, because karmic retribution. Okay? When we're not there, we suffer. We're miserable. We are making mistakes. When you're like the Buddha, you stop making mistakes. You stop creating offenses. Okay? If you're not Buddhas, you will continue to create offenses. You can't help it. That's who we are. Yes, you're very special, but you create offenses left and right. 
<laughs> okay? So you on this you enter this Rashima. But remember, these people, these like the Bodhisattvas, they can flip the switch just like that. And we while well, we cannot. We don't have that ability. They can. They can flip. Once a moment they confuse, flip. They enter this Pasha thing. It's kind of cool. Okay? And when you're there, you're there, then you have self mastery. Self mastery refers to the fact that you, inside, you're at peace. Okay? You're at peace with yourself. You don't think yourself as short. If someone calls you shorty, you say, yeah. Someone bullies you, you say, okay. You know, affected. Okay, so inside, self mastery has two parts. One part is internally, you are, uh, you are totally cool, unafflicted. Okay, and outside, uh, the outside part, self mastery is that you are at ease everywhere you are. No matter what happens, an earthquake happens, a fire happens, too hot, anyone? Okay? You still. That's called self mastery. No matter what happens outside, you are as cool as a cucumber. Okay? How about liberation? Liberation refers to the fact that what uh, we, we like to deny for us ordinary people. We deny what? What do we deny? What, what kind of denial uh, are we practicing? Anyone? Hmm? What are we denying? This is a biggie. You don't see this. Are you in trouble? Malcolm, what are you denying? The existence of God. Existence of myself. (laughs) Yourself. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's in denial. Anyone else, what are you denying? Anyone, this is so fundamental. Yes, sir. Uh, Use sign language. Black. Uh, in denial of we are in a confused state, uh, we have um, not thoughts of greed and anger and stupidity. Okay. Mm-hmm. We deny, this is what happens to us, we deny that we are suffering. Deep down in our psyche, you say, I'm not suffering. I'm happier than hell. It's bad, but I'm still happy with my life. I love my wife. <laughs> and of course, the wife don't believe it. Ask them. And say, no, he doesn't. Don't believe him. <laughs> I don't believe him. You shouldn't either. <laughs> no? Okay, so... Uh, your denial that we are suffering, therefore, uh, when you this enter this, and we have this prajna samadhi, uh, you are uh, liberated from your own suffering, your own misery. Okay? Uh, so, for example, let's talk about something real specific, real practical. Let's say you have depression. Anyone have depression? Daniel, okay. Anyone else? Just me and Daniel. Okay. <laughs> a few people. Oh, it turns out a lot more than people would like to admit. They're all denial. Okay. 
Those who didn't raise their hands are all practicing denial. Okay? Uh, uh, so, um, so, here's what happens. Let me, let, let me tell you this so that you understand uh, the connection between that and, and the spiritual practice. Okay? Let's say you're depressed. Okay, never mind. Don't raise your hands. I don't, don't bother. I know you. Depressed, 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 you, you, you. Okay. Okay, so let's say you're depressed. Okay, yeah, you, you're feeling depressed. What can you do? Nothing. Right? Not much you can do. You say, oh, I don't feel good. I don't feel good. Okay? If you have this brash and wisdom, you realize you're depressed, what happens? Flip. No more depression instantaneously. That's called liberation from depression. Sounds good? Wouldn't that be cool to be able to do? Chan can train you to do that. That's a great news. Okay? But then that woman there says, but I want money right now. <laughs> okay? No promises. I heard too many promises from my husband already. <laughs> okay? So, can you give me something real? Liberation, okay, uh, actually occurs at many, many levels, not just at prajna level. At low levels, you're liberated from certain types of depression. As you improve the next level, there you are even less inclined to be depressed about certain things. Your wife leaves you, huh, next. That's liberation from your wife. And the girls are giggling, say, yeah, yeah, good luck. <laughs> Wishful thinking. Uh, okay, so that's what happens. When you enter, when you improve in Chan meditation, your depression becomes more and more manageable. So you don't need to be all, they have all the way to the level of practice of wisdom where all depression stopped. 100%, but as you improve in your meditation practice, your depression gets lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter until zero. So there's a progression, naturally. There's hope. Think about it. That's a great news. Without any medication, without any counseling, it's like DIY, do-it-yourself type of treatment. They don't have applause signs here, do they? <laughs> Too late. Yeah. <laughs> it's called the practice of no thought. Okay, and that's that's what this thing is. So the reason I'm telling you is that there actually is a lot of hope for many of you who are suffering all sorts of mental illnesses in particular. Okay, this is the solution. This is the, the cure for them all. Meditation. For mental illnesses. Isn't that cool? And that's the only way to fix them. The only way to fix them is through meditation. Not with chemicals, with counseling, because counseling is on and off. You cannot turn it off. Whereas meditation, you can turn it off by entering into samadhi. You turn off a certain pain and suffering. And then next level of samadhi, even more, even less pain and suffering. Until zero pain and suffering whatsoever. That's a big picture. The clarity of mind comes from not being affected by your own pain and suffering. We're confused because we can't handle it. It bothers us. Wei Mang. 
Master, uh, what about the sense of guilt? I was recently attacked two times for this problem. Was it a depression or something? What, at what level can we be able to deal with this issue better? Could you repeat the question, please? Um, sense of guilt, is it a kind of depression? Or at what level can we deal with it better? The sense of guilt? Guilty. Please, like, you know, like, I'm, 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 I'm torturing her. I'm tormenting her. <laughs> so a sense of guilt. Yeah, being cute. Yeah, the cute. And I looked up Google cute. Uh, uh, I cannot find it. So the question is, the cute, is it depression or something else, right? Yes, and uh, at what level can we deal with it better? And what level can you deal with it better? Go into Prajna Samadhi and you can deal with zero guilt. Below, below that, you always have a little bit of guilt, which is very healthy for you. How else are we going to control you? And you expect me to teach you how to be free from our control? <laughs> ah, you find out. Uh, it's amazing. These people they tell me when I'm going to happen. They're not excited at all about the fact they can be eventually be free of guilt or cue. Uh, but they said, tell me when. At what level are we talking about? And instead of saying, I want to go there. I want to get there. No, they said, tell me where. Where well, I can handle it. You understand? You always want to know. Instead of getting so excited that, that tell me what to do, how do I get there? You say, uh, where is that level? You are so worldly. Okay. Next, two or three. Not thinking of the hundred things and constantly causing your thought to be cut off is called dharma bondage and is an extremist view. Okay, 204. Oh, this is juicy. I'm going to have a good time now. Are you, are you all set? Are you ready now to be tormented? Yeah, yeah, yeah? Okay. Not thinking a hundred things, okay? Okay? Remember, we, he just explained about no thoughts, right? You look at things and, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, there's no thoughts that arises at all. Now he says, he specifically says, not thinking a hundred things. And constantly causing a thought to be cut off is called Dharma bondage. What does it mean? That is an extremist view. What does it mean? It is very, very critical for you to understand this. And this is the difference between Buddhist wisdom and Ordinary people. If you don't understand this, that's ordinary people. You can call yourself Buddhist disciples, you can sell bodhisattvas and so forth, okay? You still are not. What is it? Hmm? Anyone? Can, can you all may explain to us? Can Master Z explain this to us to, and his uh, Korean followers? 
Let's give the Korean a chance. Uh, let's give a, a, a light blue. Thank you. A di đà Phật, nếu mà mình nghĩ là cái ý nghĩ nó làm phiền mình, bây giờ mình mong cho nó hết, để mình cái đầu mình nó trống lỏng, nó tự do, thì như vậy là mình chấp vào cái cái không đó, cho nên mình bị trói buộc, trói buộc vào cái không đó. Thay vì nếu nó khởi lên, mình nghĩ mình nghĩ nó là một cái cái pháp không rỗng không không có gì hết mình không có bị nó làm phiền còn cái đằng này mình nó khởi lên mình mình nghĩ mình mong cầu nó không khởi lên đầu mình trống trống như không vậy để mà mình khỏi bị trói buộc nhưng mà chính là mình bị trói buộc vào cái không đó metaphor master if the thought make us attach expect that we don't want it to attach to the freedom um, to the liberation of the thought itself does mean that you are being uh, bondage you are bound by the thought of itself instead when the thought arises you don't get afflicted because of that thought then that is freedom from the dharma bondage if you are still expect the thought to be suppressed or cut off the thought that it won't uh, afflicting us, then you're still being bound by the thought of itself. Master Ji. He's going to say, I agree. <laughs> We are but hang together. We stand together. The but brotherhood of abbots. What the? I don't need to talk about that now. What did he say? I don't have a talk, any talk about that now. <laughs> Okay. God, these guys, there's just so many tricks. I did a fuck. Don't believe him, okay? <laughs> he has to think. You know, the, the proof is that mm, mm, I don't have any thought about it. <laughs> it should come out right away. It's fake. Jumi, you, is it clear? You saw him, right? You watch him. He said, mm, no, I don't have any thought about it. <laughs> He's cheating. Okay, don't believe him. Yes, orange here. A di đà phật. Dạ thưa thầy. Trước đây con được biết là có một cái dòng tu chuyên là xả cái vọng niệm. Đó khi mà niệm khởi lên là vọng thì xả. Cứ như vậy mà cứ phân biệt rồi tìm cái chân rồi xả cái vọng. Thì con nghĩ đó là một cái sự chấp trước rất là trầm trọng. Đó là sự trói buộc. Bởi vì cứ phân biệt cái vọng với cái chân Rồi cứ xả xả mà biết bao giờ nó hết uh, <cười> Amito for Master um, Back in the day I know that there's a group of cultivation They specialize in um, uh, non uh, sa renouncing the false thought, and every time the false thought arises, they just keep uh, renouncing the thoughts. And I think it's creating a discrimination is that they trying to look for the uh, truth. They trying to look for the truth, and they keep renouncing the false thought. So I think that they're still having an attachment, a dharma bondage about that because they keep continue, continuing renouncing the false thought. Okay, very good. You see, I have to ask you because I'm really baffled why the Master Shihua disciples didn't ask him at all. His explanation is one of the best in the marketplace in the world for this sutra. But the sutra is very, very precise. It's very, very good. It is so helpful for the cultivation. I don't know why they didn't ask for details what is meant here. And the proof is that he cannot explain. Master Z pretended not uh, to understand. 
uh, uh, this woman here uh, 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 is complaining and so forth, okay? Uh, uh, but what he's saying is, here's what he's talking about, and this is a proof to you that uh, the Buddha talked about these big principles that very few people understand. And then the patriarchs came and said, okay, this is what he meant. And then this is what the six patriarchs said. And still with this, my proof to you is that no, you get it. Right? You see? Buddha's level, we don't get it. Of course, it's a Buddha's level. And the six patriarchs say, I'm here to explain things to you. And we still don't get it. Now we're talking about low level. Okay? Let me explain to you. Here's what happens to you. And the reason that they didn't ask, because they don't know this is happening, the undercurrent happening to you, and you don't realize it. Is that clear? Okay. Uh, unless you know exactly what is the trigger of all these things happening, you will not be able to fix it. Agree? You don't know, if you don't know the cause of all these problems you have, how are you going to fix your problems? Oh, sorry, time is up. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I will not torture you, torture you anymore. Okay. Not thinking of the hundred things and constantly causing your thought to be cut off. It's called Dharma bondage. He's referring to this fact that people like her, okay, uh, like him sometimes, like Master Z sometimes. Here's what happens to them. Okay? Uh, they know they're not supposed to have thoughts, but they keep on rising. So what happens is that I have ability to cut them off. I've been trained to cut them off. She can cut them off. He can cut them off. The uh, uh, fake monk in Korea can cut them off. Okay? They can't. They have developed an ability already. They've been trained. It's not about you anymore. I'm talking about a higher level, okay, uh, that they, they, they can cut off these thoughts, okay, uh, at will. They can do better than she can, for example, okay, and mass is even better. So what happened is they can cut them off, and what happened is that when they realize they have these thoughts arise, they cut them off. Then the, the great master says, it's called Dharma bondage. So they them, themselves, they said, oh, oops, I'm not supposed to be attached to this. I'm not supposed to have this thought. Thought be gone, done. And next time it happens again, chop it again. So what are they doing? They trimming the trees like the old monk does. Every now and then he goes to the side here and trim the trees in front of the stop sign. Otherwise, the city gives us a ticket. <laughs> and you think it's funny. But that's what we do. You see? It's very practical. If it's not desirable, trim it off, right? If the thought is not desirable, trim it off. What's wrong with that? It's called Dharma bondage. Yeah, beautiful. I'm helping you appreciate that don't think you understand everything. It's a many levels of understanding these dharmas. So unless you practice, unless you have people like him and like uh, the one in Korea and so forth, I will not bother explaining this to you. Okay? So, it's called Dharma bondage. It's an extremist view, meaning they are subject to it as well, and they don't realize it. And the master, Master Hui Neng, the sixth patriarch says, boy, are you in trouble? You have extremist views, and you don't even know, and you hide it behind your monk's frock. That's what happens. 
when you realize in principle you're not supposed to have thoughts, those types of thoughts, and these people are trained to cut them off. So they said they keep on cutting you off, cut, cutting, cutting, cutting off. And the six page chart says it's wrong to do that. It's called Dharma bondage, it's called extremist view. Just because you know the thoughts are, are not supposed to happen, and then they happen, you cut them off, it's still wrong. It should be a temporary fix, not a long-term fix. If you don't fix it, then it's called Dharma bondage. You, why is it called Dharma bondage? You are bound by cutting off thoughts. You know, fascinating. They think they're supposed to do that. They know they're supposed to do that. And they keep on doing that. And they are dead in their tracks. This is the only thing that hurts them. The master says, I don't care, you cut them off, good for you. But what he does is that, yes, it frees you, but it also binds you, puts you in shackles. So what do you want? Do you want me to train them, people, you, to tell people, hey, I have no thoughts? Sure, I, I swear to you, okay? As soon as the thought arises, nice pizza, boing! <laughs> what a nasty boy, boing! He's so loud, boing! That's called Dharma bondage. Is it clear to you? Unless, unless I explain it to you, you wouldn't know what I'm talking about, nor do they. That's, folks, this is how precise we are. When we look at your mind, how it functions, we know that's what happens. He knows what happens. In a fantastic name, a psychologist, name a, a, a neuro, uh, whatever a researcher who can describe this is this level of details. They have graphs, they have MRI scans, they have colors, they have red, red, blue, and all sorts of you know hues of one billion different. Uh, 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 hues, but they lack this kind of accuracy. Because unless you know what really is happening inside your little head, you'll never be able to fix it. Questions, comments? Yes. Give me a microphone, move closer. Uh, I made the phone master, so. So this is what he does. Is I said, move closer, he caught up that thought. No, I ain't moving closer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I made the phone master. So, so in real life, uh, as well as uh, in the um, meditation hall, the, uh, when false thoughts uh, come up, we just uh, ignore it or just let it be. We don't need to do anything. That's what, uh, uh, from, from uh, the teaching, from... Uh, exactly. Uh, yeah. So, when I first started teaching, I uh, learned meditation, learning meditation, uh, one of the big disciples, Master Xie Hua says, and is taught by the Chinese China as well, is that when the thought arises, use a Vajra sword and chop off, nip it. Okay, Master Xie Hua even taught that as well. They all, they all repeat the same thing of the Chinese Bay chart, including Master Xie Hua, they all did that. I also had that, said that in my Chan handbook. Okay? And that's fine. But at the advanced level, it is extremely detrimental to their practice. 
So, Chan Han book number five, and we start discussing this. We are Chan Han book number two. Okay? I will not, the bottom line is that you probably don't know how to ask, but the bottom line is I'm not telling you how to fix it. None of your business. Okay? Here's what happens. We explain too much to you, like that woman who asks, which level I'm going to be before I'm free? So I explain to you, so, oh, it's easy, master, I just do this. It's not a big deal. It's not knowledge. It's about, can you do it? Don't say, don't tell me, I know, I know, I know. Don't tell me, I know, I know. I feel guilty. Just tell me when I'm going to be free of it. Okay, next, 205. We have a few more minutes. Shall we continue? Just see how detailed that knowledge of Chan really is. You don't know how to navigate through a lot of these things. You see? It's incredible. The precision and detail level that, that this uh, Chan teacher can provide us. And this is why these are important. You may not know. You may not be able to do it. But in the future, when you're there, I can tell you, ah, remember this section? That's where you are. Then you say, ah, now I can do it. Okay? It takes that. Uh, so that's why uh, boys and girls, uh, especially people to the spies who you know, stop asking me which level I'm going to be free at that, of that problem. Okay? Uh, I, I told you, it really means nothing. It doesn't help you at all. That's why I don't tell you. 205, good no advisors. One who awakens to the no thought dharma completely penetrates the 10,000 dharmas. One who awakens to the no thought dharma sees all Buddha's realms. One who awakens to the no thought dharma arrives at the Buddha position. Okay, it's very, very good. Okay, uh, I, I admit to you that I didn't appreciate this as much when I first explained this section. Uh, three, four years ago, four years ago, because I uh, started with this mind, with the frame of mind, says, I only need to explain it to the extent that Master Shino explained it. That's good enough. So I never dare venture out of what he did not want to explain. I'm telling you, that it's not something that, that, that uh, he doesn't understand. He understands this probably better than I do. Most likely better than I do. It's just he decided not to explain it. Why not? Because his, his disciples weren't ready. Okay? Mm. So he says here, uh, when you understand this no thought dharma, this practice of no thoughts that we've been trying to explain to you, completely penetrate the 10,000 dharmas means that what is completely penetrated 10,000 dharmas. 10,000 dharma refers to 10,000 things. What are the 10,000 things? 10,000 things to the Indians, to the Chinese, is everything. They don't have a number like a zillion like we do nowadays. Okay, they only have 10,000. And beyond 10,000, oh, this is too much. Okay, so, they completely penetrate the 10,000 dharma, everything. What is completely penetrate everything? Meaning that you see through everything. You're not attached to anything. Okay? Yeah. So, uh, when you, uh, uh, what does it mean, awakens the no thought dharma? Huh? Yes, Omar. Thầy con con thấy trong hồi thầy cho con nhập thất con thấy trong kinh Quan Nghiêm nói là dạng pháp 
không có tự tánh đó nó là do mình vọng niệm mà mình khởi lên thôi giảng pháp tất cả mà biết được cả giảng pháp không tự tánh thì pháp nhãn bất tư nghì thì cứ lúng lý nào quan sát thì pháp nhãn bất tư nghì That, by the way, is not depression. <laughs> depression was this morning. <laughs> this is something else. <laughs> But I let him torture her for a while. <laughs> Translation. A meet of a master during the time that I enter the retreat, I read um, Flower Adornment Sutra. It is said this, a thousand dharma doesn't have its own self. If you understand this, then your dharma eyes is inconceivable. Meaning if you understand this way, it this way, your dharma eyes is inconceivable. Okay. No. Stick to this. It um, has no the reference that doesn't doesn't apply here. What he's talking about is the person whoever awakens the no thought dharma. What does it mean? Awaken the no thought dharma, meaning that he say, Ah, I can do it. That's what awakens. I'm awake. It's no longer a dream to me. Now I'm awake. Okay? You suddenly realize that whatever you saw before, now, is, was just a dream. It was not real. Uh, and when you are able to uh, completely have no thought, okay? Uh, and you're capable of having no thought, okay? you will be able to completely penetrate the 10,000 dharmas. You can see through the 10,000 dharmas. You are not attached to anything whatsoever. Fame, profit, nothing whatsoever. Is that clear? That person then sees all Buddha realms. Now we're talking about a state of Buddha. Okay? This is quite different from who we are, where we are. You have, this is a special being, a special state of mind that, again, he says, remember, one who awakens to, meaning when you awaken to it, when she awakens it, when he awakens it, you can all do that. The assumption here, the suggestion here is very important. Do not stop yourself. Don't say, no, it's not for me. No, it's too far-fetched. No, it's too yellow-faced. Is that clear? This is such an important distinction. Don't say that, no, it's too far-fetched for me. This is certain dharma, certain teaching, meaning that If you don't stop yourself, because I can tell you all I want, but inside yourself say, yeah, it sounds good, but mm, I'm not sure I can do it. <laughs> I know you traders, especially the guy in Korea. <laughs> he says, mm, I don't think I can do it. But he said, let me think. <laughs> okay? Got that? The reason that you can't do it, you cannot awaken to because you really don't trust yourself. You don't have faith in yourself. You really don't think deep down, you don't think you can do it. Like that lady who just came today and says, <laughs> yeah, right, I'm the Buddha. I have the Buddha in me. Yeah, right. <laughs> right? That's what you go through your head. Say, yeah, yeah, these people, yeah. And they, you know, they believe anything these Asian faced. Hmm? 
Doubt is what stops you. Hmm. Uh, they don't see the Buddha realms, meaning what the Buddha describes us. This is what the six page chart describes us. They cannot see it. And if you can see the, uh, you're able to, to awaken to the no thought Dharma, you arrive at the Buddha position. You become a Buddha. Okay? He's talking about not enlightenment. You're talking about Buddha now. We still have some time. Shall we get going? Why? You've been busy, too, uh, you know, the, 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 the children, huh? Oh, wow. All right, 207. In this way, it should be transmitted from generation to generation. It is silently transmitted and conferred. In this way, it should be transmitted. He says, we should help. In what way? What way is he referring to? It should be transmitted. In what way? Chinese person, you have a problem with translation or not? Or should I call you Taiwanese? Ran Xu Chuan Shou is a translation correct. Is it, you agree, Chinese, uh, uh, Chinese speaking people, you agree with it in this way as a Ran Xu Chuan Shou, it should be transmitted or not? People, what does it mean? Come on. Hmm? Chinese specialist. I just looked up my Chinese dictionary. <laughs> huh? Anyone? See, the Chinese are cautious. He said, if I say anything, I claim my Chinese expert. He's going to jump on me again. Too bad that uh, it's like early in 
China? What time is it in China? 5.30 in the morning on Sunday. Good Lord, who gets up that early on Sunday, not in China. Okay, so what does it mean? Okay. Uh, sorry? I think it means still needs to be transmitted. Still needs to be transmitted? Anyone else? Huh? Okay. Uh, it should not say in this way because in this way here is confusing. In what way? Did he say you should tell them so and so? No. You, it should be transmitted accurately. He's more concerned about making sure that you teach the next generation properly instead of doing it his way. Does it make sense? He says, when you teach this, do it right. Convey the message right. Don't do it this way. He never meant this way. This way is ordinary people thinking. His concern primarily is convey it accurately, convey it properly. Does it make sense? I have one Chinese person who agrees. What about the Taiwanese? Okay. So I don't know how to translate it. Uh, it should be uh, appropriately transmitted properly transmitted, but not in this way. In this way, it's wrong. To me, it, it, it's, uh, it's not his intention at all. Because when a teacher teaches, teaches you something, it's for your own understanding. And it's up to you to do whatever you want with it. The teacher never expects you to do the same exact same thing, okay, as the way he did. That's why I'm very offended. When people do, all they do is regurgitate, you know, my teacher says it, my teacher says that, okay? If you're stupid, yeah, I agree. He said, I don't have any wisdom, therefore my teacher says so, okay? But if that is the case, then you didn't understand the teacher. This would be so disappointing in the sick patriarchs. I spent so much you know, time explaining to you this sutra, and you simply re repeat what I said? Seriously? Why did I come here? I could have, you know, I might as well send, send, send a, an android, a robot over. Okay? Uh, it should be properly transmitted. How is that? Fix it. From generation to generation. Hey. <laughs> or you can ask, of course, go around, okay, of course, you must transmit it. This must be transmitted, but that's, that's too familiar. I should say the emphasis here, I'm interpreting it a little bit differently. I said it should be appropriately, properly transmitted because of its importance. Not just for, uh, for us Asians, but also to the non Asians, to the Americans, to the Hispanics, to, you know, and so forth. Properly transmitted for future generations, generation and generation, meaning that it's your responsibility. If you understand it, you must transmit it. That's implied. It's very heavy responsibility. Okay, so far the first two. You agree with that, right? Uh, you would like me to get out? Okay, refresh. So far, so good. It affects us, folks. It's not about them Chinese anymore. It's about us, future, you know, this generation, 
and your children's generation, your niece's generation. It affects them. If we don't do it right, okay, we're failing our mission. Okay. Silently transmitted and conferred. Mo chuan feng fu. Okay. Silently, meaning this transmission here is mind to mind, meaning that it's certified. The teacher says, yes, you understand. Yes, you understand. And has nothing to do with anyone else. It's person to person, mind to mind, that's it. It's not meant for you to come up here, huh? Could you turn on the cameras, please? Okay, and report to the whole world that I confer this to him. And we appreciate your support and donations. We plan to build Maha Stupa half a billion dollars, you see? Uh, so it's the opportunity for us to uh, uh, raise awareness of the importance of the Dharma, okay? Because it's useful for you and your future generation. Think about your children. You don't get it. How about your children? Okay, not that. It's silently transmitted. It's very quiet. It's a no big deal, okay? It's, it's a certification and conferred. Conferred meaning it's given the responsibility. If you understand it, it's transmitted to you. Now you have the responsibility to transmit it to others. You don't hide. You don't say, ah, ah, I don't have to do this. If it's given to you, it's conferred upon you, you have the responsibility to pass it on properly, silently, and convert to the next generation. I don't get it. We parents, when you're a parent, you worry about your children. You want to take care of them. You want to educate them properly, yes? Have a good, good education and, and uh, good nutrition and so forth, okay? Make sure that before uh, you let her out, you teach her about uh, 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 money management. <laughs> you know that? The kids, when they go to college and they get out of the house, they have no idea. They don't take care of their health. They don't worry about their diet. They don't worry about the finances. They keep on spending money. Okay? Uh, do you see? It takes responsibility. Before we spring them loose, they need to be prepared. Same thing here. For these people, this Bajar, he says, I'm conferring, giving you a silent uh, conferring of this knowledge here, this transmission here. Now it's your turn to do it as well. You, yourself, have to live with it. Right? Because your kids fail and blow up the budget and ruin the health because you didn't prepare them properly. Anyway, um, and so... Uh, there's a responsibility to make sure that we pass on our knowledge to the future generation. That's called love. That's called caring. It's not money. Hmm? Alone. Money helps. <laughs> unless you want to give them to the temple. <laughs> okay, time is up. Thank you, everyone. Yeah.